Welcome back my fellow makers, it's Matt from Keep Making and this week I'll be showing you how I built this diorama piece. Let's get to it. With the print, I'm using a Tory gate from Lane Lovecraft's Asian Adventures Kickstarter, uh, and then I scaled it up to like 200 or 300 percent, I think 200 actually. Uh, and then this is the Tiefling Samurai. I'll put a link in the description because I can't remember where I got that. Awesome mini. Uh, do recommend whoever made that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm starting with the base here again. I'm just using a cheap photo frame. I think this was a dollar from Michaels, and then you can see in the background there I'm using cork. Uh, it's really great for ground textures. You can build up on it. Uh, I just use it as the base sort of thing here. And you'll see how that turns out later on and then I'm using XPS foam to make the back and I hot glue that in place and then I reinforce it with some uh, popsicle sticks later on so the idea here is that I'm gonna be building up like a mountainside originally it was gonna be a mountain pass you'll see that a little bit later on and then I made it into like a cave entrance um, and to do so, I'm going to be using a plaster of Paris, same one I always talk about, but I'll show you it here now. Um, so I'm just mixing that in with water. I think it's a two to one ratio, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then you're just pouring it into the Woodland Scenics rock mold. Now, Woodland Scenics does make uh, a bunch of different variations of these rock molds. I only use one. I only own one. Um, and you can sort of uh, blend and manipulate the rocks when you cast them later on to sort of get away with that. Um, so it's not too obvious. I take my figure and just uh, sort of mark out roughly so that a person could theoretically fit through this uh, entrance we're making here. And then again, I'm just putting the rocks where I think they should go and then snapping off the excess so it fits along the edge of the XPS. Attach these to the XPS and the cork. I'm going to be using um, a two-part epoxy. This is just a, like a five-minute epoxy. This one's actually from the dollar store. I think it's a buck fifty at Dollarama, uh, so you don't need to break the bank getting this stuff. And it does go a long way. Um, so you can see, I'm just mixing it up here, applying it straight to the rock, and then leaving the rock to set in place. I wanted these bottom pieces to be a little bit angled uh, to better sell the mountain. Sort of, uh, if it's just flat against the XPS foam the whole way down uh, you know might look a little bit cartoony so I wanted these pieces to be a little bit angled uh, to sell that effect and so I stuck them in place with a shark. So moving on to this part, those are fully casted pieces of rock. Uh, you can see that they're vertical here. If I knew I was doing a cave entrance, I would have put them horizontally from the get-go. Um, obviously, that would have created you know, a negative space there between the two rocks. But I didn't because uh, I thought I was doing the mountain pass still. But I'm actually kind of glad I did because it gave me a chance to really uh, go in with the sculpting that you'll see a little bit later on uh, and really combine those two masses there. So you can see here, I'm just mixing up some more of that uh, plaster of Paris and that's how I'm going to be connecting and filling the gaps here uh, so I do come in later with um, sculpting mold uh, it gives you a little bit more working time and um, it's a little bit more malleable than this obviously this is more uh, liquid than that would be uh, but this does work well to adhering those small gaps filling those small gaps and adhering the smaller pieces to it This 
to the beginning of the sculpting, obviously we're going over that uh, plaster of Paris we just put on and then I'm using these sculpting tools to sort of, you know, uh, you want to follow the lines of the rocks you've already put in place and sort of match that to where you're putting the plaster. Uh, here is where I uh, decided I wanted to fill that gap in the middle and make it more of a cave entrance. And so I'm just snapping off a rock the same way we would on the, you know, the sides uh, to fit it in the middle. Um, and again, there is a little bit of wiggle room because we will be coming and filling all those gaps. So just get a piece that fits roughly and then uh, we'll be able to fill all the, all the crimes later on. coming in with sculpt -a mold uh, I'm actually using a product called fast mash and I've mixed some of the dap the dry dap caster of players into it um, but it's the same thing as any other modeling compound you would use uh, like from Geek gaming scenics or sculpt -a mold and so I'm just putting this into the recesses um, and you can still work it uh, while it's drying if you just have wet instruments you're able to uh, work in some textures into the shape so what I do is I'll come in with a foil ball and sort of roll it over to give it a rock texture uh, and then I'm cutting the lines in with those sculpting tools you saw me use a little earlier. switch from that clay sculpting tool to a wood carving tool uh, that's really handy because that'll cut into the casted pieces as well as the sculpt mold now there isn't a real science to how i'm doing this i'm just following the lines from the already casted pieces into the sort of flat sculpt mold pieces I finished sculpting, I took it outside to prime it, so that's just a gray primer with the white sprayed from above to give it a xenothal effect. And uh, if I've done a good enough job here sculpting, you won't be able to tell where the sculpting will start and the casting rod finishes. I think, uh, I mean, I can't tell looking at it right now, so it should, when you're done, should look like uh, just one solid piece of rock. Uh, so when that's done, I hit it with uh, like a really dark brown, so I'm mixing brown and black paint together. I'm hitting this all over so that'll serve as our base coat. And then I'm taking a sponge, so this is just a sponge brush, I mean you can get this from the dollar store, I just ripped it up, um, and so what I'm doing is I'm dabbing it in paint and then applying it all over the piece, uh, just randomly, to give us some variation in our rock color. Um, I mean you could achieve a similar thing with dry brushing, but I do do a couple layers, <laughs> dude, I do a couple layers of dry brushing later on, and so if you have too many coats of dry brushing, you can sort of get like a really chalky, cartoonish look. So I'm trying to avoid that and go for something a little bit more realistic. So applying these colors um, just with the sponge brush here, and then uh, I'll be coming in with some dry brushing to give it that final highlight. Like me and you buy those 25-piece brush sets from the dollar store or wherever. Um, 
you get those sponge brushes and you never know what to do with them. I mean, at least I don't. Uh, so don't just chuck them in the bin. Um, you can use them for stuff like this and, you know, applying like glue to bases and stuff like that. So there's always a use. This is also um, dry brushing here with a makeup brush from the dollar store. Uh, these are really great for dry brushing uh, and they sort of, they get rid of that hard edge you sort of sometimes get with chip brushes. Fine place to stop obviously that looks like a rock right uh, but uh, I go in with some uh, weathering pigments after uh, to really get that final layer uh, of realism in there um, these are like the hobby ones I think these are Vallejo this one I'm using right now but uh, you can see in those cap bottles to the side I actually do use pastels it's a little bit cheaper uh, you can get them in all sort of funky colors uh, so I crush up the pastels uh, put them in these bottles and then you just apply with a brush and then you're sealing it all in with some uh, isopropyl alcohol, I use like a 50% one for this so it doesn't uh, eat away at the previous layers of paint I've put on. And uh, once you've applied all those colors, then uh, it's a pretty realistic effect that you get. So again, I apply all the pigments, spraying it down with the ISO, and then I'm hitting it with another layer of that same dry brush um, before we start applying the pigments just to dull some of the effects back down uh, and bring out those highlights again. Before I put the Tory gate in place, I wanted to sort of get into this uh, cave area uh, and get the first coat of it down because it'd be sort of tougher to reach. I might uh, hit the Tory gate. So uh, starting on the Tory gate, I'm just painting the, the rocks sort of the same uh, method that I used to paint, obviously the mountainside, uh, a little bit less intense. Um, but yeah, so it's just a uh, base coat, then I'm just applying a wash and then a highlight to them.
going for like obviously like a wooden Tory gate. Um, so it's painted red, but obviously with time that would sort of weather away. Uh, so you want to go in with like your wood color. So for me, it's like this light tan um, and just apply that all over like the paint is starting to wear away on this wood piece. Then I hit it with a black wash to bring out some of the details. You can see that uh, middle piece, like the medallion thing, uh, symbol, I don't know what that's called. Um, that's green now. In the end, I actually make it uh, metallic uh, and apply some like rust and, um, you know, patina effects to it. Uh, but for now, it's green. It bugs me looking at it. But <laughs> I did eventually change that if it bugs you too. Um, so yeah, just applying the black wash all over, letting it sink into the recesses, spraying it down with water where it pools. Uh, and then leaving it to dry. And then just using some pigment powders, the same ones I use on mountain piece uh, just to sell some more weathering effect on this uh, Tory game. And then I just hot glued it in place. Um, so now we're moving on to the ground texture. So I'm going to be using tile grout and I just apply that uh, PVA straight to the base and then tile grout right over. And then I'll be spraying it down with some isopropyl alcohol to really seal it in place. So once the ground texture has been applied, I'm also wanting to build out that path in the middle that the figure will stand on. So to do that, I'm just piling up tile grout on the side. I'll be applying some uh, big and small rocks to the middle of the path to give it just a little bit of variance from the ground texture on either side. And then we'll be sealing everything in with PVA and ISO.
that once the tile ground is dried, I just apply my standard burnt umber ground texture coat, and then in the middle, I'm applying a lighter sort of um, like a like a light beige coat to sort of simulate uh, like gravel sand type of thing. So once the paint dries, then I'm going in with the pigment powders again, so that sandy sort of uh, white pigment powder, and then I'm hitting it with the brown as well off camera, uh, and then that'll give us some variation to the path here, uh, and sell the look a little bit better. Just like that. And then I'm hitting the rocks with just a gray, uh, hitting them with a light dry brush and a little bit of a wash, just so they can sort of uh, blend in with the rock of the wall and the bottom of the tour. Then I'm just hitting the brown areas with a lighter brown uh, to give it a little bit more texture. Uh, just doing that with a dry brush. Uh, after that, then I'm applying the Mod Podge. This is what I'm going to use to adhere the static grass to the piece. Unfortunately, I did lose the footage. Uh, my phone died while I was recording the static grass application. Uh, and so unfortunately, I don't have that to show for you here. Um, you know, but it's pretty basic. I just applied it from over top. Uh, and you can see this is how it turned out before it dried. So as I waited for the static grass to dry, I then started painting my miniature. And after I'd finished painting my miniature, I went back into the piece uh, and started making the unholy guacamole. Uh, so you can see here, uh, there's a little bit more reindeer, reindeer moss than usual. And uh, I think asparagus fur, I don't know what it's called. Um, but a little bit more natural parts than usual. And then I'm mixing it with the PVA glue as per usual. And uh, just mixing it up and applying it all over the piece with a cheap old brush. Um, I used more uh, natural things to sort of give it a more realistic look. Uh, when you're working at smaller scales, um, like your wargaming pieces and stuff, uh, you can sort of skip that uh, unless you're trying to make it really look like a lot of overgrowth has occurred. Uh, but here, you really want to bring some more detail uh, so it doesn't look too uh, amorphous green blob type of thing. Um, and so that's why I did that here. So this is a character, uh, obviously, who has one arm, which has been replaced by a mechanical arm, uh, steampunk sort of thing, because why not? Uh, and they represent an order called the Order of the Broken, uh, and they're guarding a sacred place. And that's all I'll say, because I think my players are watching, and this is coming up in the campaign. So, uh, yeah, uh, I had a lot of fun making this piece, and I think it turned out really great. And so hopefully while you watch me make it, uh, you were able to learn something about making or about the hobby. Uh, and here's how it all turned out. Well, that'll do for this video guys thank you so much for checking it out and if you liked it hit the thumbs up button if you loved it consider subscribing to the channel make sure you're hitting the bell so you're notified when my videos come out whether you're building something of your own design or being inspired by somebody else's keep making it